Hello and welcome back to Mass Effect. I did some extra inventory clearing and now I'm fairly confident that I don't have too many items in it. Maybe a bit too much because uh, now I only have like one or two weapons free in every slot. But whatever. So yes, um, hmm, we're here, okay, yeah, I generally do want to go in this direction, sort of, somehow, oh yeah, there's a passage, kind of a passage. Okay, that went fairly well, given the turn here. And now I need to somehow get to these places. Go to the pyramid, but I'm still missing a few things. So, okay. So I generally want to get down. Huh. Yep, I see stuff. So, we're going down first. Geronimo! Okay. That went well. I'm just so glad that there could also be a thrasher mark here. Hmm. Thought there was a deposit there, but I guess not. Okay, let's investigate. Um, <laughs> that was weird. But now it works. So we're dealing with husks. And cryo containment cells. What is that guy doing? Garrus is going to destroy him if he just stays there. And he did. Okay. Oh. That's an interesting place. Oh. That's a lot of them. Actually, that's right. Cover does absolutely nothing. Take that. Okay. 
Okay, where are the others? Oh, there they are. They're not the smartest guys. Excellent. Perimeter secure. Nice. So, what's our reward this time? Hmm. Well, I can climb a bit. And just like last time, this place is locked. Oh, but there's a crate. Great. Huh, okay. This does not go anywhere. Hmm. Okay. Looks like the rest of the... Reward is up there, somewhat. Now, this is locked too, just like last time. And there is... Oh, another great kit. And... ooh, amps. Nice. And lockers. Oops. Oops. There we go. So many boxes. So many goodies. And this doesn't open. Okay. And there's nothing else left here. Right. Well, that was easy. But we still have another one of these buildings to investigate. I think we left some of the treasure back in the third one. So I want to get back to that also. Here, nope. Oh, I see enemies. Probably husks. Now, how do I get there? No, oh, there's a science facility. The facility structure is just on the other side of the slip. So I can easily get to there. I'll be back for the science facility a bit later. Yeah, this. Hmm. Dragon's teeth. Easy to tell what kind of enemies are there. Okay. Let's. What was that? Oh, crate. Another crate. Oh, new and medium armor. Interesting. Is it of any use? No. Fine. This looks like an item, but it's not, apparently. And did we take everything else? I don't know. I did take this box. 
anything over up here. Yes, and after selling all these items, I am very close to the maximum once again. If once again I'm not uh, missing some zero somewhere. Okay, yes, looks like I have everything else here. So let's just get out of here. Perimeter clear. Excuse me. Would you mind walking? Now it gets fun. Thank you. Sheesh. Perimeter clear. Come on. Come on. Come on, Shepard, you don't need to be stuck here. There we go. I think we're done here. That we are. Right. Now for the science facility and the debris. Well, first the debris. It's right here. Just along this path. That's an interesting terrace. I'm pretty sure that the developers generated all of these terrains randomly, but for some of them they added some finishing touches. Which is why you can see some nice paths going to places and so on. Crash probe. Okay. Still no frictionless materials that I'd like, but we'll get to that eventually. And there's still ore somewhere that I'm missing. This looks quite climbable. Let's make use of that. Ooh. Steady. There are some enemies around here. They might be husks. They're husks. So they're not a problem. Very much not a problem. Now there's a car. Hopefully our Mako doesn't end up like that. While we're away. Well, let's see. Are there more husks here? I bet so. Especially looking at these dragon teeth. Oh. Hmm. Actually, these sort of effects really remind me of the Drac in Unreal 2, just on a much smaller scale. So that's an interesting crate formation. Not seeing anything. here. Yep, they're husks. So, again, pointless cover is pointless. And now they're all closing on us. Oh. Ah, 
nice. Fireworks. Behind you! Whoa, that's a lot of these guys. equipment over here, some consoles we can all interact with, some crates, medkit, but no goodies that I can tell. There's one of those screens that are not actually showing anything. And some concrete blocks. As usual. At least these glow in, in the dark, which is a nice effect, but not very useful in terms of goodies. I am disappointed. But maybe here. Wow. That is lazy. They literally put nothing in here. Hey. Alright, what is going on? Well, there's a terminal and there are some goodies. Not very many though for a fairly difficult fight in comparison. Oh, a light human armor. Well, that's okay. Well, it's from Han Kadar, so it's not great, but I'll take it anyway. And a malfunctioning object. I'm not sure why it has high explosives in it, but I think that's better than what I have. Yes. Hmm. More radius, more force, more of everything. Weapons locker. Okay, that's more treasure than I thought this would have. Oh, whoops. Whoops. And a wetware kit. Amps everywhere. Okay, let's see. Do we have something better than we had before? Uh, no, but I have the same one. Mm, it's the same that Liara already has, also. And everything else is not useful. Okay. A colonial pioneer team rarely consists of more than a few dozen specialists. It's clear that none of them have survived. The Cerberus group has a lot to answer for here. Okay, so that was the entire Pioneer team. And we got the logs. Let's look at our journal. Mm, Colony of the Dead. Logs seem to indicate this colony was intentionally infected by Cerberus. The inhabitants were innocent victims of the nefarious organization's experiments. Yep, so that's pretty much what we already gathered at the very beginning. Since Cerberus is connected to this place, they must have been responsible for this. 
And I think this is about the last time that we hear of Cerberus in this game. Um, we'll hear a lot more about them in later games. But so far, when you think about it, Shepard kind of has about as much reason to go after Cerberus as he does to go after Saren. Because, well, what has Saren done? He has tried to destroy one human colony, Eden Prime. And Cerberus has managed to destroy one human colony here. Now, admittedly, Saren didn't succeed. And also, admittedly, this colony is pretty small. So, I think that's about equal between the two. Next, Saren killed Nihilus. Whereas, Cerberus killed uh, Admiral Koku. And also his squad of marines. By luring them into a Thresher Maw Trap. I think that also sort of balances one another out. Then, Cerberus also experimented on all of those marines that they captured, both from Kohoku's squad, on Kohoku himself, presumably, and... Ah, there we go. That's the ore. And also definitely experimented on Corporal Tombs of Shepard squad back in Akuz. And they were responsible for the massacre at Akuz also. So their modus so operandi is to place a beacon, have someone respond to it, and get themselves led into a Thresher mod trap. And well. What does Saren have to go for that? Well, not a whole lot, really. The only thing that Saren has done on top of that is try to recruit more people to his cause. And... Uh, speaking about some mystical reapers, who seem to have been the key to the destruction of the Protheans, which is why it's important. Oh, hey. More space cows. So it's more important, yes, for us to focus on stopping Saren at the moment, because if he is right, then these Reapers might also be able to wipe out everything else in the galaxy, so that's a bit more urgent. But otherwise, there's even more reason to go after Cerberus than to go after Saren at this point. So that's something to keep in mind. And we're on the top of the world! Woohoo! Nice. But we export everything pretty much, so let's just get back. And does the Admiral have anything to say? Nope. Oh well, let's just move to the last star system, and that's Caspian. Almost like a sea. MS3 Cornucopia, okay, but first... Anything useful in this ring? No. Also, that's an interesting looking star. It's either... Very cold or very hot, it's hard to tell. MSV Cornucopia. The Cornucopia is a Kowloon-class modular conveyor of human design. 
While obviously adrift, the cornucopia is not broadcasting any distress signal. Registry is X Solar Shipping from Seoul. So it must be a human starship. But first, all other plants. Klotanka. Klotanka is a large but low-density terrestrial world with an atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Its crust is composed of sulfur and unremarkable silicates. Occasional deposits of heavy metals, usually the result of meteor strikes, dot the surface. High-speed winds, powered by the hot blue star Caspian, present a constant hazard. Atmospheric entry is hazardous, and EVAs are discouraged. Long orbital period, fairly large. Short day length, thin atmosphere, fairly warm, fairly low gravity, which makes sense for a low density world. Um, hmm. Looks pretty interesting, but I guess it's not very remarkable, aside from having heavy metals like iridium. Farnuri. Oh. Farnuri has a trace atmosphere of carbon dioxide and helium. The surface is mainly composed of silica laced with iron oxides, indicating the world had an oxygenated atmosphere and subtime in the past. Given the relative youth of the blue star Caspian and the significant gravity well of Farnuri, this must have occurred with astonishing swiftness, perhaps a result of some cataclysmic event. Further research is required. Hmm. Yeah, iron oxides. So it's pretty much Mars. Good to know. Also, yes, the star is a very hot blue star. So I was right. It's very hot. No atmosphere at this point in Farnori. Long orbital period, pretty large. Very cold though. And high gravity, too. Heavy metal. Gold. It's not just iron, but also gold. Okay. Next up. Almer Crux. Almer Crux has an atmosphere of methane and ethane. Despite its great distance from Caspian, the energetic young star heats the surface almost temperate levels two almost separate levels. Thick ground fogs are common at the Terminator, where water ice frozen during the long dark side night meets the warm air masses from the day side. The crust is mainly composed of copper with deposits of sodium. Almer Crux's abundant water at a relatively mild temperature and gravity have placed it on the short list of terraforming candidate worlds. However, there is significant opposition from eco-ethics groups, who assert that Almer Crux's primitive methanotropic bacteria may be a precursor to a full-fledged native ecology. Hmm. Yeah, methane and ethane, that's right. And if they are methanotropic... Methanotrophic? Yes, that means they eat methane. And they probably produce something else, like sulfur or well, oxygen or something like that. So it's like a very young version of Earth. So it makes sense to try and protect that also. It's, yeah, it's for some reason warmer than the previous planet that we looked at. Pretty small, day length is long, pressure is fairly low, and gravity is a bit low. Antida. Antida is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. Its atmosphere is darkened by traces of sodium. It is one of relatively few planets known with an orbital period of more than a millennium. Wow. They're not kidding, the orbital period is 1,296 years. 
large radius and short day length. Trinium Cinia recovered. Scans of Antida revealed a group of defunct turrets orbiting the planet. The recon team carefully retrieved one of the turrets and brought it on board. Tally dismantled the weapon and found it was marked with a Carthon outpost to Cinia. Okay. We're not yet at the very end of our uh, ability to hold credits, so that's good. And I will see you all next time once we go into that drifting spaceship. Later.